Hello everyone, my name is Sachalais Amorimoto and I will be the one to report and discuss about the basic laws of matter. For the competencies of this, explain how the basic laws of matter, law of conservation of mass, law of constant composition, and law of multiple proportion led to the formulation of Dalton's atomic theory. The other one is describe atomic, uh, Dalton's atomic theory. So the basic laws of matter consists of law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportion, and law of uh, multiple proportion. The first law is the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass states that the total number of reactant molecules and total number of product molecules in a chemical equation are equal. Thus, mass cannot be created or destroyed, and it is merely rearranged. Antoine Lavoisier, the scientist, credited in the discovery of the law of conservation of mass. It was in 1778 that these French scientists performed several experiments with the phlogisticated air. In 18th century, a scientist thought that uh, when things burned, a substance called phlogiston came out of them. But then, experiments in in closed vessels where substances could be accurately weighed began to help early scientists such as Antoine Lavoisier and understand that when things burn, oxygen is added. He realized that matter could be changed but not destroyed. In chemical reactions, no matter is lost or gained. So what is the significance of this? Uh, law of conservation of mass. Example is when we balance an equation. We are simply obeying the law of conservation of mass. So all the atoms in reactants must be accounted for in the products. So the total number of reactants is equal to the total number of products. So example of this is the magnesium plus oxygen combined together to form a magnesium oxide. What you can see on the image is just that the atom are just simply arranging themselves. That means there is no loss or gain of atoms during the reaction. So in a summary, in a law of conservation of mass, it simply says that during a chemical, a chemical change or a chemical reaction, there is no loss or gain of atom. And that is the, for the reason that we balance chemical equations. The next uh, basic laws of matter is the law of definite proportion. It states that in every chemical compound contains fixed and constant properties by mass of its constituent elements. Uh, this law was put forth in the year 1797 by French chemist called Joseph Proust, and hence it is also referred to as Proust's law. This law of definite proportion was based on his experiments conducted on the elemental composition of the water and the copper carbonate. And uh, the best example of this is the ammonia. So again, the best example of this is the uh, ammonia. So by means of extreme heat or the composition process, we get a nitrogen and hydrogen atoms in the same proportion by mass. So let's say we take 17 grams of ammonia or NH3, then if we decompose it, then we will get 14 grams of nitrogen and 3 grams of hydrogen. And, and these uh, 14 grams of nitrogen and in 3 grams of nitrogen, uh, hydrogen is in a constant ratio of 14 is to 3. So whether we decompose compound in any other way or any, ad, any other forms, the ratio of nitrogen and hydrogen will always be the same. So this is seen in all uh, compounds existing naturally or even artificially. So in a law of definite proportion, the fixed, uh, sorry, the, the chemical compound contains a fixed and a constant properties by mass of its constituent elements. So that's it. The last law is the law of multiple proportion. 
this law states that when two elements combine to form more than one compound, the different masses of one element with the same mass of another element are in ratio of a simple whole number. As we can see on the projected image, when element A is combined with its element B, the ratio is 1 is to 1. When two atoms of element A combine with an element B, the ratio is 1 is to 2. When three atoms of element A combine with element B, the ratio is 1 is to 3. And when, element, when two, four atoms of element A combine with element B, the ratio is 1 is to 4. Dalton's law of multiple proportion expanded the law of definite proportion in which elements can combine to form multiple combinations. Thus, the ratio of the elements in those compounds can be expressed as small whole numbers. So again, this means that the weight of one element that combine with a fixed weight of other are in a ratio of small whole numbers. I have here an example of a nitrogen combined with a oxygen. So when nitrogen combined with an oxygen atom, uh, the ratio there is 1 is to 1. Is it because the gram of a nitrogen is, co is consists of 14 grams, while the oxygen is 16 grams? When there are two oxygen atoms combined with a nitrogen, the ratio there is 14 is, 30, 14 is to 32. 1 is to or 1 is to 2. When... Uh, Two atoms of nitrogen combined with an oxygen, the ratio there is 2 is to 1. Uh, 14 grams, 2 14 grams of nitrogen is equals to 28, then a 16 grams of oxygen, that is why 2 is to 1. So when two, uh, when two atoms of oxygen bonded with two atoms of nitrogen, the ratio there is 28 is to 32. Uh, 16 plus, uh, 14 plus 14, which is 28, and 16 plus 16, which is 32. So the ratio there is 2 is to 2. Another one is when 5 atoms of oxygen bonded with 2 atoms of nitrogen, the ratio there is 28 is to 80. Since 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 is equals to 80, and 2 grams of nitro uh, uh, 2 nitrogen, which is 14 plus 14, is 28. That is why the ratio is 2 is to 5. So as you can see the as you can see on the image. Uh, this uh, really means that the weight of a one element that combined with the uh, fixed weight of another elements are in a ratio of a small whole number. Basic laws of matter, which are the law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportion, and law of multiple, propor uh, multiple proportion, led uh, to the Dalton's atomic theory. So what are uh, these five main five main concepts of this theory. Number one, matter is composed of tiny indivisible particles called atom. Why is it cannot be divided or indivisible? It, it is because it is the smallest uh, thing in the universe. Next is, all atoms of the same element are identical in mass and properties, but are different from atoms of other elements. Uh, this was already discussed on my previous slide about the law of definite proportion, or in a law of multiple proportion, in which there is a constant and fixed property of its constituent elements. So, like for example, the property or the mass of a carbon dioxide is fixed, and the uh, the property and the mass of an oxygen is also fixed. So those elements, although they are combined together, they are different in their mass and properties. The other one is compounds are formed by a combination of two or more different kinds of atoms. We all know that combi uh, compounds are the combinations of two or more elements, and each element has its own property and, and it and has its own uh, mass so when these elements or atoms combine together they form or they also known as a compounds 
Next is when elements react to form compounds, they react in defined whole number ratios. So when elements combine together, they have their own uh, fixed and constant uh, property or mass. So whether they are com com uh, whether they are combined together, they have their different properties. So they being expressed in a uh, simple whole numbers or simple whole number ratios. So this means that again it was or it was further discussed on the law of multiple proportion that when the weight of one element is combined with a fixed weight of another element, they are in a, uh, they are in a ratio of a small whole numbers. The last one is a chemical reaction is a rearrangement of atoms, which I have already, uh, which I previously discussed on the law of conservation of mass, in which it states that it states that the a total number of reactant mo uh, is uh, equal to the total number of the product, and thus there is no uh, uh, loss or gain of an atom. Uh, what happens during a chemical reaction? A reaction is just a rearrangement of atoms. So these are my reference of my lesson.